Well, regarding the bedding, we have heated bedding. This is the system we are using, and we manage about 20 square meters per cow. We also give them feed. After about seven days, we provide the initial feed, which is the feed we use. So they get used to it and start eating. Therefore, there are cows in the robot that eat at least 1.8 kilograms of feed up to 7 kilograms as they are eating more. The milking sessions per day depend on the state of lactation of the cow, the days of lactation, the days of gestation of the cow, and the production. The robot holds her, does not milk her for 10 minutes. She is held, fed, but not milked. And then the robot picks up the fifth set of teat cups, and what it does is clean the udder, dry it, and stimulate it for milking. Regarding the diet we use, we aim to have a TMR with 60% reserve. The reserve is corn silage, oat silage, alfalfa silopac. Welcome, today I am here in Uruguay, visiting a dairy farm that has an automated milking system, robotic milking. Well, I hope you enjoy this video. Subscribe to our channel, leave your like here. Good video to everyone. Good morning, my name is Marcelo Riguar. This farm is located in the city of Frevento, department of Rio Negro, in Uruguay. It is a warm bed system with four robots in the end. We started bringing the first cows on November 20th of last year and finished completing in December. And from January, we have all the cows. The process has evolved and the cows have adapted. This system was chosen because by confining the cows, it allows us to milk twice as many cows in the same area and confinement allows us to achieve higher individual production per cow. The goal is to be above the average of 36 liters in all cows, and we are getting close to that. How many milkings are done per day on average? The milkings per day depend on the state of lactation of the cow, the days of lactation, the days of gestation of the cow, and the production. Based on these three parameters, the robot gives her permission. It can give one and a half permissions, or four permissions, or there are some cows that are milked up to five times. In other words, the robot, according to these parameters, gives the permissions for milking and the kilos of feed it provides. The kilos of feed, today we have an average of 4 kilos per milked cow, but there are cows that eat 7.5 kilos and others that eat 1.5 kilos. How is the robot feed? The robot feed is a feed with 30% protein, based on soy and corn. It is composed of 60% soy and 30% corn, and has a flavoring to attract the cow to the robot to be milked. Is it all pelleted? It is pelleted and palatable. This is a robotic system with smart gates because it is a voluntary system. But the cow, to go eat, drink water, and be milked, goes through a gate that reads her chip. If she has permission to milk, she goes to the robot. If she does not have permission to milk, she goes through a corridor to eat and drink water. It is a managed system. How did you design the robots? Well, the Laval team helped us with the design. More or less, according to the area, we estimated the number of cows we could milk. And based on that, we designed the barn, all the robots part, and the office. So you are looking for 36 liters per day, on average 36 liters with four robots, right? Yes, four robots. The system is for 280 cows. Four robots, 280 cows, is the idea. The ideal for the robots would be to provide more or less 3,000 liters of milk per robot per day. Today we are already dealing with parameters of liters of milk per robot, and we are not talking so much about cows per robot. In Brazil, they talk a lot about 60, 70 cows per robot. Here they are not thinking about milk production. With smart gates, we milk a few more cows than if it were voluntary, because the cow that does not have permission to milk does not go through the robot. In an open and voluntary system, there are cows that go to the robot. The robot does not milk them, but it takes up time. There are even cows that go through the gate 12 times a day. Thus, they enter the robot 10 times and are milked 3 times. That is, there are 7 times that they take up the robot without milking. In terms of milk quality, we are doing well. Regarding somatic cells, they are within the parameters we must maintain. Fat and protein are doing well, they are not bad, but the more liters of milk are milked, the percentages decrease a bit. The percentage is lower, but if we count the kilos of solids per cow per day, we are within the expected parameters. And here do they pay for quality or quantity? Here they pay us for quality, 
and they pay for solids. They pay for fat, protein, and quality. Quality is based on the somatic cell count and bacterial counts. Is the brucellosis and tuberculosis part also done once a year? Yes, there is a mandatory health control once a year, in which tests for brucellosis, tuberculosis, and anthrax vaccination are carried out, which are zoonotic diseases transmissible to humans. And the quality of life, how is it for you to work here? Do you have to place orders? Do you have to be part of the canteen, the food? How is the quality? In terms of quality of life, we have seen an improvement because many routine tasks have been replaced by technology. And in terms of animal welfare, we have also improved because the animals are freer and this makes them calmer. Well, we have seen an improvement in human and animal quality. Regarding the diet we use, our goal is to have a TMR with 60% reserve. The reserve is corn silage, oat silage, alfalfa silo pack, that is approximately 60%. The rest is concentrated. And what is most often used as a concentrate is corn and soy. Then, a salt with various components is used to balance the diet. Alfalfa is not used here? Yes, we use alfalfa silo pack. This is processed. We do it here on the farm. And all the silage part is outsourced to a company that does it. A single TMR is used for all the cows that are in the milking room, and the robot makes the differentiation with the feed it gives them. According to the production and the state of lactation and gestation of the cow, the robot gives her more or fewer kilos. The differentiation is there. So, the TMR is the same for everyone. Well, regarding the bedding, we have heated bedding. This is the system we are using, and it is managed at about 20 square meters per cow. The bedding is moved twice because there is a chemical process with nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon that is applied to the bedding. And well, in these winter months is when we must pay more attention to it because it cools more easily and what we do is add more substrate. What substrate is used here? We use the chip, the fine returnable, and we have a factory nearby which is UPM, and well, we use this substrate. Is the substrate not a problem for you? No, of course, we place it very close to the substrate. And sometimes we also use some barley or wheat straw. It can also be used. When do we add straw? When we add straw, it is to make the bedding more voluminous and soft so that the cows are more comfortable. What we also seek when coming to the barn is that the cows are distributed throughout the barn. And this gives us a sign that the bedding is well uniform everywhere. Well, here the cows actually receive two components in their feeding. One is what the mixer unloads here in the trough where the goal is to provide a basic diet and all the fiber comes here and then the robot allocates the concentrate to complement this diet depending on milk production and defined parameters. In reality, they all receive a basic diet here and the robot makes the difference depending on the production level. Therefore, there are cows in the robot that eat from a minimum of 1.8 kilograms of feed to seven kilograms, the one eating more. More or less here, we calculate about 26, 27 liters that they receive here in the trough and the rest of the feed would come from the robot. Therefore, there is a large amount of, each cow is treated as an individual cow, let's say, as if each cow were a herd. Each cow receives feed according to what it produces. And there are cows that give 20 liters. And there are cows that give 60 liters within the same size. And each one receives different feed according to that. The basic components of the diet they receive here in the feeder with the fibers are corn silage, alfalfa bales, oat silage, and straw. At the moment, there is no oat silage, but the rest of the components are available. In addition, some corn grain is added, soybean expeller is also added to this basic diet for the 26 liters on average. Furthermore, all the minerals in the mix, all the ruminal health part, and all this other part also come here in the mixer. It is formulated using the software available on the market, basically Ascend, and well, we try to put a lot of emphasis on management suggestions or recommendations of, well, Everything related to cow movement, how to allocate feed, all this part is very important in these systems. Feeding is important, 
but all the management, how we do the transition, the fresh cow, how she goes to the high group, what is the strategy to change the feed she receives? All this part is very important, let's say, so that as they are diets that challenge the cows a lot, we do not have problems with sick cows and so on. And what are the challenges you have for milk production with robots, for example? Well, there is really not much experience in Uruguay with robots. I think we need to increase the amount of kilos they eat in a robot. In addition, the number of visits they make to the robot and the number of visits they make to the trough is a point that we should try to increase as much as possible. The more times they eat here, the more stable the rumen is, so we have fewer digestive problems. And, uh, well, I think the other point is that all this is transition. Uh, in the prepartum and in the first 20 days of lactation is where the whole game is defined. And, well, there are many things to be adjusted, I think, in general in dairy farming, not just in this case. This robot has a fifth set of teat cups. When the cow enters, the first thing it does is a pre-dipping and then the robot picks up the fifth set of teat cups, which cleans the udder, dries it, and stimulates it for milking. Well, then it puts on the four teat cups, one at a time. The difference with this robot is that it has a camera and not a laser. And well, at the end of milking, it does a post-dipping, which is the sealing. Then, the cow shows all the data. Here are the estimated liters it will produce. Now, when you put the teat cups, it will inform the liters she will give and the milk flow inside. What it also has is a meter for each quarter. It measures her milk for each quarter. Here it has the four meters and, well, as the teat cup is placed, it will tell you how many liters it will give and what it expects more or less. If, for some reason, the cow does not give the expected liters and gives a lower percentage, it means that she had a problem or something like that and the exit door takes her to the hospital pen so that you can examine her and see if she has any problems. Well, here on the screen we see the quarters of the cow. This cow has only three quarters, and it informs here the milk flow that is complete, which means that she is giving milk, informs the liters she is giving for each quarter, and in the other, which is a little grayer, informs the expected liters of milk from the cow. Each teat has a milk meter, it has four milk meters, and then we have the cow information. This is the third lactation. She is 98 days old on the farm. Then we can see the average number of liters of milk, and it will tell you more or less that in the last 24 hours, she gave 58 liters, because every time the cow is milked, it automatically loads all the data into the computer. So in the computer you have from day zero to day 98, and it will make a graph of how many liters she gave per day to detect mastitis. The Delpro program has a program within the program that detects mastitis, and what it does is a formula that measures the conductivity, the blood of the cows. It uses this to create a formula that depends on how many liters the cow gave per day to detect mastitis. This is not 100% ready because we are waiting for the automatic calf feeding system to be installed in other pens, and this will also improve human and animal welfare because it will make the calf and the person responsible for it much more comfortable. What is the amount of colostrum provided? Now in the nursery, there are about 30. Some have moved to the rearing area. There were about 50. We give them three liters of colostrum. We try to have a colostrum bank. The best colostrum we evaluate, we keep, and that is what we give to the heifers. The males are being sold this year. We are not raising any males due to a space problem. We had nothing prepared because we were taking care of the other nurseries, and well, so the males are being sold, and we are only raising the females. We try to give colostrum as soon as possible, and then they start drinking milk seven days later. They drink two liters of milk in the morning and two liters in the afternoon, four liters in total. And then they start to substitute the milk until they are 60 days old. We give them six liters a day, three in the morning and three in the afternoon, besides that. From 45 days, we give alfalfa and also feed. At seven days, we give the starter feed, which is the feed we use to get them used to and start eating feed, and at 60 days or 50 days, depending on the group. We try to have them all at the same age, but sometimes when they do not give birth together, it may happen that we have a group that is not so homogeneous, 60 days more or less, of the group. We try to reduce the milk, so we reduce the milk by two liters and start to wean them, and then, at 70 days, they go to the rearing area, which goes to alfalfa and self-consumption of feed, which is the side you can see, on this side, to have some cows, and on this side, we have the rearing area. Yes. Is it done individually when they are born or always in a group? 
No, it is in a group. The system we have here is a teat with 12 teats. They come, get in place. We look to make sure each one takes in its teat. That is how we are doing it now. And then with the automatic calf feeder, each calf will be a group. Each calf will have its lactation curve. It will be like the robot. It depends more or less on the size of the calf, the days since birth. And then it decreases. It has a weaning curve. Here we have dry cows after last year's rearing, and we have heifers in the field. But we hope to have all the cattle confined soon. That is what we would like. The dry cows are confined. We give alfalfa hay and also corn silage. The mixer comes and we give corn silage. The dry cows normally go from here to the pre-calving area, so the change we make is not so abrupt. In terms of reproduction, everything related to calving is being restructured. Because before we had seasonal calving as they were outdoors, and now that they are confined, the idea is to have more seasonal calving, avoiding calving in January and February due to the heat. But to have calving from mid-February to November and what will complicate us is that we always used stickers, and now we will not have this part of calving because they remove the ink. The idea is to be closer to the cows, but as they are confined, it is easier to see them than if we were in the field. We can see the movement of the cows, and we can see and pay more attention to these cows. In addition, we are starting to use synchronizations with prostaglandin not on a fixed time, but according to observation. The robot sends us a spreadsheet with an index that measures the milk conductivity, the presence of blood in the milk, and the presence of a kick. The kick is associated with the existence of pain in the udder. According to these three parameters, it sends us an index. The cows that are in red are reviewed. We go to the quarter. If it has recently calved, we review the quarter, do a CMT. If it is clinical mastitis, we treat it. If it is subclinical, we give an anti-inflammatory. At the next milking, we review it again. How do we review? We give an order to hold the cow. When she enters, the robot sends us an alarm signal saying that the cow is held, and we have 10 minutes to review her. When she enters, the robot holds her, does not milk her for 10 minutes, she is held. If it exceeds these 10 minutes, it releases her without milking and puts her back in the waiting pen. When she enters and is held, it gives us time to review her. The cow we review is the one that gives an index above 1.8. Conductivity varies according to the cow. Those that are above 1.8 are the ones we review. Those that are in yellow, which have improved or self-healed, usually when they are environmental mastitis, the cow self-heals. Here it shows the times it had problems. Here we see if it had problems, if it is incomplete or not. Here there are no incomplete ones. Here it shows the production percentage, and here the kicks. Everything is in green. Here it shows the conductivity, the conductivity parameters of each quarter, and the blood in each quarter. This cow, for example, gave blood. This cow has recently calved. When she has recently calved, even after a week, she may give a little blood. It is normal in the physiology of the udder. And there is the entire production from the cow's first day until today. So, for example, there is a cow with 98 days then. Here we have different parameters. This one gave 72 liters yesterday, but should have been milked more times. Let's pick one at random, and here it shows the lactation graph. This cow has 114 days of milking. The average production is 46.6, 47 liters and yesterday gave 46 liters. This is what the cow has been giving. It has the lactation curve that shows. The lactation curve, that's it. I will stop here. Here it shows, look, the lactation curve that the cow has been making and the concentrate consumption graph. As production increases, it gives a little more concentrate consumption and the daily production. The green would be the summary. This cow is going up, it is 24 days. Here it goes from zero to 20 days, gives little feed between two and three liters and three kilos per day. When it reaches day 21, it starts with four kilos and 100 grams per liter it is producing, so it starts to increase. Let's see if there is another one. This one has more lactation, 101 days. 
53 liters of average production, and yesterday gave 46. This cow has 120. The point is that to start seeing good results, you have to wait for a whole complete cycle because I have cows here that calved last year and come from another system. Those that start calving in this system and are already being milked here, there is the difference. There is a six liter difference.